I love Harry Potter. I resist it. So good. Oh my God. I resisted it for years because I was like, if, it's, if that many people like it, how good could it be? It's very good. I love it. And not just from like, because of the magic and stuff, just from like a vicarious standpoint. Because it's this kid who transfers to a different school and then his life is totally different. Because like I transferred during high school and it was horrible. <laughs> on Valentine's Day, these guys to mess with me sent a girl flowers with my name on them, like from Kamel. And then I hid in the library all day. And when I came out, a bird pooped on my head. <laughs> None of that is lies. But how awesome would it have been if I transferred and everyone was like, oh my God, you're Kumail Nanjiani? You're the most famous boy in the world. You are now the seeker on the Quidditch team. I love Harry Potter, here's my only issue with it. So they go to the school and they take classes like defense against the dark arts and divination and potions. But they should also be taking like math, right? or history, or geography. They're getting tested on care of magical creatures. Never heard of the Holocaust? <laughs> and in every book, there's like a door that's locked with magic, and Harry and his friends have to know specific spells to get through, and they always figure it out. They should just lock the door with math equations. <laughs> they would never be able to get through. Like, we use the invisibility cloak to get through that, and then we use the polyjuice potion to get through that. But to get through this one, we have to know the square root of nine? <laughs> Where does the square root grow? <laughs> and what the hell is a nine? <laughs> is that one of Voldemort's dark wizards? We should split up, there are three of us, so... Oh wait, the door just opened. <laughs> I love video games, any gamers here? I love them, I love them. I, uh, there's a series called Call of Duty. You guys might not like this joke. But the newest one came out, and it's set in like Iraq and Afghanistan and stuff, like stuff that's going on right now. So I was gonna go get it, but then I found out that the newest Call of Duty has a level in it called Karachi, which is the name of a city in Pakistan, the city I grew up in. Yeah, that's very weird for me. They're like, your hometown is now a battlefield. <laughs> How many points can you get? But even with that, I was able to convince myself, you know, like I'd have an advantage over everybody. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, we can hide in there, guys. I used to rent movies at this place. <laughs> Mr. Siddiqui will give us shelter. <laughs> so I was gonna go buy it again, but then I found, okay, so the language you speak in Pakistan is Urdu. That's the name of the language you speak. It's called Urdu but all the street signs in Karachi in Call of Duty are in Arabic, which is a totally different language. And I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but this game took three years to make. If you look at it, they get every detail perfect, like the graphics, you can see individual hair on people's heads. When they run, they sweat. When they run, their shoelaces bounce. All they had to do was Google Pakistan language. 